What is non-exercise activity thermogenesis and why is it so important? When someone wants to lose weight or improve their fitness, what's the first thing they tend to think of? That's right, hypothetical Harley decides to lace up their old trainers and start jogging. Get your fingers out and do some quick maths with me. If they jog for two to three times per week, 30 minutes at a time and burn a couple of hundred calories per workout, what percentage increase has there been in their overall weekly calorie burn? Somewhere in the ballpark of three fifths of absolutely fuck all. This bar represents all the calories you burn per day. Actual exercise for the average person is a teeny tiny contributor to total energy burn. Consider it the little cherry on top. But this is where non-exercise activity thermogenesis comes in. NEAT is all movement outside of exercise. You roll around in bed, walk around your home, fidget, maintain posture, walk around the shops, cook, carry, clean, or spontaneously wrestle a raccoon that's broken into your house. All of those low-level activities combined make NEAT the largest contributor to total daily energy expenditure that you're actually in control of on a day-to-day -day basis. It has been estimated that people engaging in physically active jobs could burn up to an extra 2,000 calories per day versus someone who is chair-bound. <coughs> Office jobs. <clears throat> if you have a twin who works a highly active job and you work a sedentary job where your maximal physical exertion is occasionally walking to go for a piss, they are going to find it much easier to mitigate weight gain. Unless you decide to implement an exercise routine resembling that of an ultra-endurance Olympian. One study overfed participants by 1,000 calories per day, and due to subsequent changes in NEAT, the differences in fat accumulation varied tenfold. Solely from an energy balance perspective, you are likely to burn significantly more calories if you work a highly active job versus working a sedentary job and bolting an exercise regime on top. And this is thought to be one of the primary drivers to rising obesity rates once you consider the environmental changes that impact NEAT on a population level. As a single example of this, one study looked at trends in US school children. It found that the percentage who walked or cycled to school plummeted from around 40% to under 13% in less than a 35 year period. The glaring increase in motorized transport options is an easy way to demonstrate how NEAT is going to decline over time. But there are actually a fuckload of examples when you stop and think about it. Yes, public transport, elevators, lifts, escalators, etc. All of those assist us in walking less. But what about devices around the home? Television, games consoles, Netflix, internet, etc. One study estimated that 8 to 18 year olds spend an average of 4.5 hours per day watching TV. This was positively associated with increased body weights and is likely to be one of the many factors which displaces physical playtime. We have more online shopping options which saves us the hassle of going out and walking around the shops ourselves. Goodbye high street shops, hello Amazon. Dishwashers and washing machines save us hand washing and one study estimated that these type of mechanized processes can save us over 100 calories worth of energy burn per day and sales of these devices correlated with increased obesity rates. Are these examples still too obvious? What about brushing our teeth? A lot of us don't really do that ourselves anymore. We just hold a toothbrush near our mouth and let it do the work for us. We have automatic bin lids that we can just hover our hands over, voice activated devices that save us having to press buttons ourselves. Hey Siri, what's the weather like today? It's currently cloudy and 22 degrees. Thanks, I couldn't be fucked to go and look out the window myself. A lot of technology is designed to make our lives easier, whether it's saving us time, effort, or both. And that's not necessarily a problem in itself, it just means our environment is becoming increasingly conducive to physical inactivity, which has a knock-on effect in terms of body weight and health. This is not a finger blame game, there are many reasons why people may struggle to maintain an active lifestyle. Someone who's employed in a sedentary job, working long hours with a hefty commute, and has kids to look after when they get home, obviously has less free time to play with. You are probably less likely to go out for a leisurely stroll if you live somewhere with shit weather, unless you really fucking love being rained on or catching hypothermia. And you're less likely to go out for a walk if you live in an unsafe neighbourhood with no legitimate walkways, unless you really like living life on the edge. Our overall lifestyle trends are rapidly moving towards physical inactivity, and it's hard to know when this will ever slow down. People often say you can't out-exercise a bad diet. Likewise, it's very difficult to out-exercise a sedentary lifestyle, and that is the direction that our global population is heading in.